Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And in this episode, Pete Warner is going to tell us all about his Central Europe Adventures by Disney vacation. Very exciting. I'm joined at the table by our panel of experts. That's so convincing. <laughs> it was. Um, somebody over there to my right. Oh, client services manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. Our producer is sitting at the table with us, Craig Williams. Hello. Chief Executive Officer for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Peter Werner. Hey, everybody. And our associate producer, Rhino Clavin. Why is it on me? <laughs> it's supposed to be on you, and it's on me. Get used to that if he's at the switch. <laughs> oh, is that I know. I mean? said at the beginning of the show, I didn't. I my camera wasn't going to be on, and I wasn't going to be on the show, so you didn't have to acknowledge me. Well, we have to do it anyway. It's okay. That head is might, too large. We have to acknowledge it. Well, you also might participate, and we want to make sure people I know might you're have here. a question. You're right. Thank you. All right. So again, thank you guys for being here. I'm really, really excited to talk to Pete about a Central Europe Adventures by Disney trip. Um, this is a trip that Craig took last year, two years, two years ago. ago. 2015. Three, three years ago. Three. So it'll be interesting to hear you guys telling your... And there are some differences. There are yeah. some changes in this trip from when Craig did it. So. Also, I want to point out, this is a very, very popular Adventures by Disney trip. This is small. And you guys haven't done this one. We have not. We were booked. And we got stuck leaving Orlando one day. Then the flight, we had to leave the next day out of Orlando, and our plane between Orlando and New York City stopped for gas. Oh, yeah. I'm not exaggerating. We stopped to refuel in Virginia, and then the woman in the seat in front of me had a grand mal seizure. Oh, that's right. I remember this. That's right. So we got to New York and missed our flight, and John said to me, that's it. That's it. We're doing. The, the, the no, universe is telling us something's wrong here. Don't go. So we ended up not going. Spent the weekend in New York. But anyway, let's get, let's get started. Uh, Pete, what is your sort of general impression of this trip? You've been on so many. That... Uh, you know, and I, I, I say this, you know, it's been about three weeks since I, since I got home. So the, the, the glow has, has worn, worn off, so to speak. You know, you come back from the trip and you've got that. Uh. Right. Um, so with that being said, I can honestly say this is arguably the best adventure I've been on. Wow. Um, and and I have to say that because I uh, I did not <laughs> this was not top of my list this adventure was not top of my list to do um, I am not a sound of music fan I not that I you know don't hate it or anything I'm just not a fan I, like I don't get like all oh my god it's sound of music and this trip borrows very heavily on the sound of music i will say this i came off the trip a sound of music fan um i didn't go in that way so when i would look at this trip um on paper it just didn't didn't jump out at me a uh, person i was supposed to go with it was the one who chose this unfortunately due to a family emergency he could not go so i ended up going by myself can i which... also also start by saying too this was not a trip you were given Disney did not invite no. you on this. No, trip. this we paid for this. Paid for this. In we full, paid for this. No discounts or anything. So. Um, as anything that we review, um, we pay for it. So, um, I just want to give some basic trip facts for folks before we get too far into it. Um, this is a nine die, nine die, nine day, eight night adventure uh, for twenty nine for twenty nineteen. Uh, these departures run from June seventh through September twenty fourth. Prices are ranging between $58.99 and $64.99 per adult, depending on the uh, departure date. For children, it's $57.89 to $61.69. Um, the single supplement is 50%, 50% so um, it's whatever the per person is plus another 50%. As someone who does Adventures by Disney, that is the current pricing. These are volatile prices. They, If the trips fill, they can go up. So I just want you to know right, that. Right, that's uh, as of the time I put this together. Um, this trip goes uh, starts in Prague, goes to Salzburg, and then on to Vienna, Austria. Um, so uh, let me start with my guides because okay. I'm not going to do a blow by blow of this trip. I'm just going to talk about what really. Those usually turn into four hour recordings. Yeah, session. and I don't want to do that. Um, but I, you know, even just doing blow by blow, you can see here I've got a lot here. Um, so I'll try and get through it as quickly as I can without making it boring. Um, our guides were Casey and Winston. And as as always been the case with every adventure I've been on, they were spectacular. 
Um, but what the, these guides were were different in in, in in some important ways. Normally, you always have um, a guide that's you know a Disney cast member. And, oh, I mean, they're both Disney cast members, but you have one that's like you know usually a Disney cast member back here in the states. Brought up through the sort of guest uh, services, guy, VIP guest services, services right. ranks, um, and then you have a guide that is local to the country or countries you're visiting on that trip. So Casey was our Disney guide, and Winston was our our European uh, guide. Um, but what was different was neither of these people had come up through the ranks at Disney. Casey was working for other tour companies when she uh, auditioned for Disney. Um, and if you know anything about the audition process for Adventures by Disney, it is grueling. It is thousands and thousands and thousands of people put in resumes um, to, to get these jobs. Very, very hard to get. Um, so that's why these guides are always so good. They're so well vetted and, and then trained. And then Winston also, uh, which is not unusual for the European guides, right. for the local guides, not to be uh, Disney, you know, coming up through those ranks. Um, what did surprise me is while Casey has been doing this with Adventures by Disney for a few years, this was Winston's first season. And I say that because I can normally spot those new guides at a thousand feet. I mean, they're, you can tell. I thought Winston had been doing this for at least a few years. He was, they were both phenomenal. Phenomenal. And not, you know, I don't, they, they know who I am when I come on these trips. So I have to factor that in. So I don't pay too much attention to that. I pay a lot of attention to what I see them doing with other guests. Um, these guys were just perfect. You talk about knowing how to read the room. First of all, we had a great group. We had about 23, I think I was, it was 23 including myself on this trip. So it was a smaller group, um, but it was a great group of people. And the guides just, you know, you had some people that, you know, physically couldn't do some of the things and, you know, they were wonderful. They're just, the guides are the biggest justification for doing Adventures by Disney. They are the biggest selling point, but it's a selling point you don't realize until you've actually done one of these. So I can sit here and say it till I'm blue in the face, and we see it all the time. People say, oh, these are so expensive, so expensive. I'm like, you really need to try it, and then you try it, and they come back and like, oh, my God, you were so right. Never had an experience other than that. And we've been doing this for many, many years yeah. now. Um, and the fact that they were not up through the VIP ranks, it added a certain authenticity. Mm. It wasn't... Not that they weren't like quintessential Disney. They just, you know, there's that, when they come up through VIP, and I don't want to take anything away from the guides who did come up through VIP, but there's that certain Disney ah, that they get, and these guys were not like that. They were authentic and very real and perfect for this trip, perfect, perfect guides for this trip. Um, so I wanted to start out with that, that my guides on this trip were absolutely spectacular. That's awesome. Um, would love to have them both again, which is why I, wanna, I actually want to do this trip again. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But, um, all right, so this trip starts in Prague, um, in the Czech Republic. And my impressions of Prague were that this is an absolutely stunning, stunning city. I mean... But you notice as you walk around Prague, one of my first impressions the first day I was there was that uh, it's a city that doesn't know quite what it wants to be when it grows up. Um, it's been roughly 30 years since the fall of communism. Um, we, they have the first generation now that has grown up without knowing what communism is. So you have a lot of these authentic, you know, historical buildings and locations throughout Prague. But there's also an awful lot of Burger Kings and KFCs mm -hmm. and McDonald's and The Gap and things like that. And, and just the way it was in woven into the city, for lack of a better term, I'm like, that's how I just felt. Like, this, the, the city really doesn't know what it wants to be yet. Um, uh, I think there was that, that, that urge to embrace everything Western 
when the wall fell and Eastern Europe uh, became open to Western influences. And so you see some of that in the way the city looks and feels as you walk around. Um, I found it very difficult in Prague. And again, I wasn't there very long. I was only there one night before, one day before the trip started. So um, it was very difficult in Prague to find what you would consider, just walking around on my own, uh, a traditional Czechoslovakian mm. meal. Yeah. Um, because it, the food is so blended. It's so blended. Um, and so that was like one of my, but it absolutely stunning, 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 picturesque city. Um, the hotel we stayed in, uh, also I should mention that you use the Crone for money. It's not on the euro. They'd like to be, but they're not. Um, and so you have to change money when you get there. And uh, so keep that in mind. That's not on the euro. But uh, Czech Republic is the only place on the trip that isn't. Once you get into, uh, once you get into Austria, Austria, you need the euro. So you really do have to have two different forms of currency. But like you said, there's a little bit of time there. So you don't have to get hundreds of dollars in the local money. You can get, oh, get away with just a few dollars worth. Right. What about the language? Was there a language barrier? In Prague? Not really. No. Um, most people in in the city of Prague itself spoke English. Um, uh, later on in the trip, we uh, we stopped, and I'll talk about this. Uh, uh, Chesky Krumlov. Chesky yeah. Krumlov. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Everyone has to experience this town at least once. There, I found there to be a language barrier. But in terms of... Uh, in terms of uh, the Prague itself, no, not yeah, at all. Not. Um, we stayed at the uh, the Marriott in Prague, was the hotel. Um, and what I can say about that is it's a Marriott, and not particularly a great one, but it wasn't awful either. What it lacked in charm, um, it made up for and its staff. I will say the staff was first rate. Um, and as I have in my note, notes here, because this is how I write notes to myself, the staff is amazing, and the city itself more than compensates for the painful mediocrity of the hotel. Um, yeah. And that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, the rooms aren't amazing, especially like when you walk in and see the lobby. It is, it's a nice lobby area impressions, and then you get up to a room. It was a nice lobby in 1989. Yeah, um, and the rooms... Lots of brass, lots of mirrors. The rooms um, don't even match that, though, but it's in a great location. You're only maybe what, a couple hundred yards from where you start getting into the main tourist areas around there that you're one no, you're in a go beautiful, to. No, it's a yeah. beautiful location. There's yeah. no question. The location of the hotel is excellent, and it's centrally located to everything that you'd want to walk to, including the kind of stores that Kevin and I are likely to shop in. Don't know what you mean. Um, Walmart? Is there a Walmart? There is a Walmart. There okay, is a Walmart yeah. on their on their Rodeo Drive. Um, but uh, I will say the breakfast at the Marriott was among the best hotel buffet breakfast I've ever had in my life. Was it because it was more of an American style breakfast? It. Um, As opposed it, to it wasn't these... even so much that, although, you know, the, the, it had all the usual staples for a breakfast we would, we would eat. Um, it was just really, really oh, good. good. It was really, really good. And we'd had dinner there one night as well in that same restaurant. And food and beverage, they seem to do really well with. Because um, one of the things that happens on a lot of the trips in Europe is you get to day four or five, and people say, I would kill for eggs that aren't runny and bacon that's not floppy. Yeah, you know there becomes this well. No, I mean they do the back bacon thing, yeah. um, so it's uh, it's not the same. The bacon isn't the same. The eggs were, you know, just everything was very good. I then again, I've eaten a lot of breakfast in Europe, so I'm kind of used to that. It doesn't affect me as much. But everybody else on the trip seemed to agree that breakfast was a highlight um, for that particular good. hotel. Um, our welcome dinner was in a restaurant called the Sarah Bernhardt. Restaurant, not to be confused with the Sandra Bernhardt restaurant. Love Sandra Bernhardt. Sandra Bernhardt is the uh, is the comedian and actress, right. and Sarah Bernhardt is somebody else. An actress. An actress. The turn of the century. Um, the last century. 
and it was a lovely space, a beautiful space, and a very good meal, a very nice meal. And I will say they were very accommodating to my dietary needs. Um, and, but, you know, and I get, you know, people joke, or because I mention this all the time, I like to point out, I, I, I do, a, I eat a keto diet, ketogenic diet, and I do that to manage my diabetes, um, which has worked brilliantly. Um, so, you know, pastas and breads and potatoes and sauces are really not a big part of my diet anymore. Um, I can get away with that in the U.S. You cannot get away with that. They, when, you, when you tell them you want chicken with no sauce on it, what you're getting is a piece of leather. Um, and eventually, early on in the trip, I said, okay, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and deal with it as you know, best I can. You tell them, I don't want any carbs, and they bring you pasta. Well, <laughs> right? carbs. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what you mean. Um, but it was a very good dinner, a uh, very good dinner at this restaurant. Our, our first full day was a walking tour of Prague and lunch on our own, and it was... It was very nice. It was beautiful. We got to see castles and yeah, Prom Castle, Prague which Castle. it's like it's not a small castle. It is this giant structure. You've probably seen it in a ton of movies. Like there's been multiple Mission Impossible movies that have been filmed in Prague. Um, uh, there was a, a Mila Kunis spy comedy that came out earlier in the summer. I don't remember the name. Film there too. Those are words you, you usually put together. <laughs> Mila it's, and Kunis. Mila Kunis spy comedy. Yeah, really. <laughs> was the was the first day strenuous? Was it a long walk? Was it a... no? It was. It was. You know, they they know what they're doing. They break it up. So we had a woman with us who was had limited mobility, um, and uh, she was able to. You know, there were certain things she sat out, but she was able to keep up with us, and you know, it was all it was all good. <laughs> so it wasn't overly stressful. It was about a half day though. Um, yeah, we finished up at about, I want to say maybe, we started at like 8 and then finished at like about 1 o'clock. Right. And then had a couple hours on our own and then nighttime stuff. But we did something, in pro- I don't think you did this, no. um, the Progressive Food Tour? No. Okay. I'm going to tell you of all the dining experiences I have had on an Adventures by Disney trip, this was one of the best. Um, we had Neil and Jan were local our local guides, our step-on guides for this. Um, and um, they took us, it started in um, it, 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 this little, it's like almost like a back alley place that has these, uh, the, the, the food the food culture and the food scene in Prague is really up and coming. So you've got a couple of chefs that are really making an effort to like up their game. And they took us to this first location where we were served all sorts of tapas, like meats and sausages, and it was unbelievably delicious. Um, now, when they called it a progressive food tour, I expected that we would do, you know, mostly, most of, most of the time when you do a progressive tour, you have one place where you do your appetizer, one place you'll do your main course, one place you'll do your dessert. That wasn't quite what this was. We started out at this place doing these tapas dishes and appetizers, and then we moved over to, and I wish I had the name of it in front of me, I don't. Uh, We moved over to a a riverboat that has been turned into a restaurant. Wow. Um, And they served us our main course and dessert there with um, some authentic Czech entertainment. We had... Uh, the dan- th- dancers, dancers, and a, a little band that was actually normally I find that stuff annoying. It was charming. It was charming. I think on these adult exclusive departures, though, I think that's really great for families. I think it really yeah. works well when you have kids. I think on these adult exclusive departures, which this was, that doing something, expanding on what they did at the beginning of it with the tapas is probably going to be better. Um, cause, and that was the feedback I gave them. I said, you need to take this first part of this trip, this first part of this progressive food tour, and expand it. 
I mean, I thought the, the, the riverboat was really cool, but I would have preferred two or three more places that would have expanded on what we were doing. Yeah, local food yeah. tours, that's usually what you do. Like, they've done the food tour in Italy and things like that, and you go from place to place and right. have a small plate. And I think having Neil and Jan um, do that, these guys were so entertaining and so knowledgeable and absolutely, arguably the best step-on guides I've ever seen on an ABD. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say that lightly at all. These guys were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. ABD must never, ever get rid of this, this piece of it. I know it's a recent addition. I think it just added this season. Um, this needs to be a regular part of this. And on the adult exclusives, they really need to like ditch the riverboat and just kind of follow through. It's funny through. you should say this about this trip, the way you're talking about it. This trip was one of ABD's originals, and they stopped doing it. And they brought it back, rebranded as Central Europe. It used to be magical kingdoms, castles, and fairy tales or something like that. But they stopped doing it for lack of interest. They brought it back and named it Central Europe, and it's very popular again. Yeah, well, this is some of the reason why. Um, now, going from another highlight for me was the trip from Prague uh, to Salzburg. It's a fairly long uh, drive. But they break it up. And one of the ways they break it up is we stop in this town called Chevsky Krumlov. Um, I am not one of these people who wants to sit and listen to a local guide tell me the history of this building. I want to go see this place, especially when I only have a few hours. Um, the only way I can describe this is like every fairy tale must have been based on this town. I mean, right down to... The beautiful castle on a hill with the little village down underneath. Yeah, um, this was the point. Like, the, not taking anything away from Prague, it is a very beautiful city. But Kylie and I expected that was our first time ever in Europe, and we're like, we were kind of like, okay, well, if this is what all of Europe's like, it's not what we expected at all. And then you get to Chesky Krumlov, and you're like, no, this this is what you always thought Europe was going to be. This this just a town from the 1200s that feels like parts of it are still just as authentic now as it was then. And, and some of the best shopping you'll find on this trip, I got to be honest, um, this was not a great shopping trip. And I'm a professional. Um, I had a really difficult time finding things that really stuck out to me to buy. Um, and that, for those who know me and have traveled with me, you know, you're like, oh, my God. So, um, but that's an upside on this for me, too, is that I didn't end up spending, you know. You weren't detained at the border. I wasn't detained. Well, I, we'll talk about that in another show. But I was detained uh, at the border, but not for other reasons. Like our Italy-Switzerland trip? Well, there was that. There was that. But, no, I'm talking about the problems Where I Where we had to unpack the bus? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but this town is the most charming thing. Uh, I, I, it may be the most charming thing I've ever seen in my life. That's how I felt about Zermatt, Switzerland. Even more charming than Zermatt. Even more charming, if that's possible. I mean, it was just, it's like, it really, it's like it, right straight out of a fairy tale. It's an eclectic city, too. Like, Kylie and I spent most of our time there exploring the castle. Uh, it's no entrance cost to get into their castle but it's amazing like pete said it's up on this hill there's bears they have bears that's sitting there like in pits right where you walk into I the castle to go to a bar that had that. It, <laughs> different kind um but it completely like incredible to walk up through and we spent most of the time just exploring that and so then by the time we came back down we had to eat something for lunch before we left and so we walked into the first place that we saw and it ended up being a a French family that had a little crepe store down there. And so that was the next thing. It's like, we're starting to get a grasp of like the yes and no's in terms of like, uh, the, the Czech language, but then to hear French <laughs> out of there, it just kind of caught us off guard. So, and we, it, there was other nationalities. Yeah. All there around was a there lot too. of, a, a lot of, a lot of eclectic dining yeah. uh, in this town. Was there a reason like these, these trips usually follow a story. Was there a reason for this stop? Was there a, 
this was the UNESCO heritage site. Okay. And, you know, right. they always try to, just based on me looking in the books all the time, when I'm like, where can I go with ABD? You almost always see like, oh, it's a UNESCO, UNESCO World okay. Heritage Site at some point. And so. um, again, I think the, the, the main reason for it was they need uh, to break up the trip. They need to yeah, break yeah. up the trip. Condé Nast Traveler just picked it as one of their top destinations. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? Chevsky Krumlov? Mm-hmm. Wow. I would go back there in a heartbeat. For, I would for, actually, I would actually like go there as a destination for yeah. authenticity. Yeah, no question, no question. Um, now, the other thing on this drive from Prague to Salzburg that blew me away, uh, and uh, Winston, our Austrian guide, was hysterical because of seeing my reaction to this. As someone from New Jersey or from the Northeast, when I say the words "rest area" to you, it evokes a certain image. Well, we stopped at a rest area on the way to uh, on the way uh, to Salzburg in Austria, and we'll be putting picture. We'll have some pictures go up with this. I was blown away. First of all, it looked like an adorable little country restaurant with the wood paneling and 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 the the uh, uh, red and white uh, red and white check tablecloths and beautiful buffet was out and all these fresh breads and then the store attached to it was just like <laughs> it was like charming threw up i mean it was just and the bathrooms were immaculate immaculate bathrooms that you had to pay like a euro or half a euro or, whatever, or something yeah. to get into. It's all over um, check. And I'm going, you got to be kidding me. This is a rest area. Yeah. And Winston's like, uh, yeah. I'm like, he's like, are they not like this in America? No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they're started, exactly like this. I said, I said, have you been in New Jersey, Winston? And he's like, no, I'm like, I want you to go. And I want you to stop. Doesn't matter if it's Turnpike or Parkway. And I want you to go into a rest area. And I want you to remember this conversation. One of my big things is when we were in Italy and we stopped, and it's like, there's prosciutto in a rest area. <laughs> right, but even as nice as those rest areas are, they're still very, like... A little um, bit auto side of the road type right. of, yeah. No, this was like some place you're going to drive your family to to go have the dinner. Destination. <laughs> um, what was it, like Mimi's Cafe, I think it's called, that we have out here that's kind of yeah. like that? Yeah. It's kind of like that country, homey kind of place and i was like okay i'd go like i'm sure this is and like and like the buffet looked amazing everything was so fresh the bread everything it was incredible so yeah that was no if you do this trip the rest areas in austria and we stopped at a few of them and they were all like this so good on you austria um all right so salzburg was our next stop um our uh, our hotel in Salzburg was the Sheridan Grand. Um, it was a, a step up from the Marriott, to be sure. Um, you don't agree? Well, we didn't oh, stay that's right. at this. You didn't yeah. stay there. This was one of the differences between his trip and mine. Yeah, we we were based for the Salzburg portions in Werfen. We were based out of Berchtesgaden, Germany, which was home of uh, Hitler's eagle's nest and one of his other houses that he had so yeah but it made with that it was we were very close to salzburg but we were still about an hour away right so, it was very remote they said yeah that, and, and people complained that it was too remote wasn't that hotel also very very modern it was modern but it is probably still my favorite hotel i've ever stayed at uh i don't think those two so, things are um exclusive exclusive yeah it, it just it, I, I enjoyed it. I could see how some people would dislike it. It was very remote, too. Uh, the closest town of Berchtesgaden was about a 20-minute drive down from the top, and there was no taxi service, really. So I think the problem was that once you got out there, there were, other than the hotel, there was nothing to do. Right. Exactly. So, so it's too remote. Yeah. Is the new hotel in Salzburg? Yes, it's in Salzburg. Wow. And again, um, when I say centrally located... Literally, this is where the Sound of Music stuff starts to kick in. Um, there wasn't a lot of Sound of Music stuff to talk about in Prague. Did you watch the movie on the bus? We did. We did. On the way from uh, Prague to Salzburg, they played the movie. Um, right behind our hotel, literally right behind our hotel, are the gardens where they filmed the Do Re Mi scene uh, in Sound of Music. The steps, and it looks 
still looks exactly the way it looked in the movie. Did you wear your leader hosen? I did not. See, I'm jealous of that. That was the one critique, as much as I did love the hotel and staying in Germany. It, Salzburg, we, you know, that was like five hours without staying yeah. there. It was very quick. We did a Viking cruise and we actually took a car out to Salzburg and we saw the gardens. And Instead of going to Passau one day, yeah. we took a, a very long car ride and went to Salzburg for the day. And so I just want to mention with the Sheridan Grand, like I said, it's a step up from the Marriott. Its location is, is, is phenomenal. Great staff, rooms. The room I had had been redone. Not everybody on our trip had a rehabbed room. So the people that were not in rehabbed rooms were saying, this is awful. Oh, um, the, but the ones that were in the uh, rehabbed rooms, they were very modern. You know, outlets everywhere, USB ports everywhere. Um, it was very clean, but as I note here, very clean, but still, it's a Sheridan. Um, so it was not... Or sometimes, you know, real estate, location, location, location. If you, Salzburg is a walkable city. Very you walkable. You want to be there and you want to step out of your hotel and experience the city. I would rather have a less lovely hotel than to be that remote. Yeah, I like to be yeah. a location. Yeah. No, agreed. No, I would oh, not have wanted to be We did the else. Germany trip and we stayed in a castle, oh. which was lovely. It was my favorite hotel ever. They had taken a castle and gutted it and built a modern hotel inside it. However, there was nothing. So it, it's. I would rather stay someplace where there's more to do. Yes, I oh, agree. So, um, Old Town in Salzburg is fantastic. I mean, fantastic. Gr some really good shopping opportunities there. Is this the pedestrian walk? Yes, it's all pedestrian. There's no street traffic. Right. We were in a cab, and the cab drivers have clickers, and those barricades lower, and they can drive you into the old part of oh. the town. I didn't see any. Um, so uh, beautiful to walk around, uh, lots of restaurants, things like that. Did you go to the Louis? I, we I ate, went by it. We I ate in the restaurant right next door, the Blue Goose. I didn't, like need, I didn't need anything, um, really. So I, I saw where it was, but I was also, uh, when I found, by the time I found the Louis, I was on my way back to the hotel and didn't have time. So, um, But great shopping and stuff like that. Uh, the highlight there um, was our dinner at a restaurant called St. Peter's. Yeah. Um, they claim this is the oldest continually operating restaurant in the world. They have proof of its operation going back to the early 800s. Wow. Um, and, and I thought we did good in Rouen. Yeah. It is built into the side of a mountain and is breathtaking absolutely breathtaking and because we were a smaller group the room they would normally put us in um they didn't use we were able to fit our group into this smaller room that was like all carved out of the mountain yeah we walked it but we ended up in the banquet room you had the so, banquet but room the restaurant was stunning the restaurant itself downstairs is absolutely yeah. breathtaking um and the food was good there was i wish i had gotten the name of this dessert there was this I'm, i was really glad i suspended my diet <laughs> for this port part of the trip because there was this dessert, it was kind of like a marshmallowy meringue. Everybody on this trip was like, it was like crack. We were wow. So like that was that was incredible. It's, I didn't bring back many things, but one of the things I did bring back was one of the older guys on my trip knew how obsessed I was. There was one of the beer mugs there that was branded with the restaurant's logo. Oh, and really? Yeah, and he. He didn't tell me until we got back um, on our bus, but he stole me one, oh. and it broke on the way home, and I was oh, devastated. It's karma. So it told me I would have gotten you one while I was I, there. It's it's fine. So I'll, the hope is one day I go back and I can go to that restaurant again and steal another one, <laughs> steal my first one. <laughs> it's um, petty theft, you know. Well, <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right. Um, the other uh, highlight of Salzburg was the salt mine. We did a salt mine. I don't think we did the same one, but I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Um, 
were you sliding down things? Yep. You start with your slide down. Well, you have to get on your jumps. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's start at the beginning here. Now, I they were explaining that we would be sliding down things in salt mines, and that we had to put on these jumpsuits, and they were showing me pictures. I'm like, oh. And you ride the train in, too. You have to ride a train into this thing. You know that pedestrian walkway? (laughs) You'll be back at that. That's where you'll find it. I was not really excited about this. Um, And, you know, I'm like, why why, why are slides involved? Once you get in, you find out why. But, yeah, they make you put on this white jumpsuit because it's a salt mine, so it's dusty and dirty, and um, you take a, get on this little train, and it takes you deep into the mine, and uh, at different points in the mine, as you go walk through the mine, you get to these points where to go to the next level, you need to get on these, they're, they're, they're two on each side, There's a, they're two wooden beams, polished obviously, um, that sit together yeah. and go down and you kind of center yourself, your butt on these beams and down you go. Yeah, you straddle them. And it was cool because like we were there obviously for our tour and did it, but then we actually got to see the workers, the salt mine workers come in and you know, they just everyone that's in our group is going like we riding it down. <laughs> and then these guys come in and they're just like flying down them because they're they're getting to work and stuff, but it's it, whoever thought that a slide would be so entertaining. <laughs> and it, it ended up being a really cool wow. visit. Um, I wasn't thrilled about it Man. at first, but you get a really good. Uh, they play movies, at these little movies that were made to explain yeah. like why the salt mines were important to the area. And um, did you go over one of the salt lakes? On we, a did. Boat? Yeah. we did. Yeah, we did. We went over. It was very Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> that that boat going to like like across the Salt Lake and uh, stuff like that. It was very cool. Um, so uh, on paper, it looked really messed up. Yeah, I gotta tell you, it doesn't sound good at all. Um, <laughs> it sounds awful. But it was actually a lot more fun. In you take the train down into it. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. No. Slides and and Is little the train trains to the center of the. So earth? how do you get out? You ride the train back. No, but how do you get up the slide area? Um, they have, uh, at the end of it, there was an escalator that brought you up. Can I like, take the down escalator? Well, that's what I was saying. Like, okay, you know what? You have the technology. Why didn't you use it at the front of this tour? Um, but it was fun. But after this is where the Sound of Music uh, highlights mm-hmm. really begin. Um and you, they, they, you know, as you're driving around Salzburg, they, they point out various scenes from the movie, uh, the exterior of the house that mm-hmm. they lived in. and The nunnery, the outside of the, the outside of the nunnery. Yeah, um, we, we did see that. We did. We saw that. Yeah. And we did not sing How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria at all. We went to um, one of the places we went to was um, what is known as the Pleasure Palace. Did you do the Pleasure Palace? Uh, Schoenbrunn? Was that? I think Isn't so. There one or no, Schoenbrunn's in Vienna. No, in that Vienna. was... Um, no, um, this is where the, where, the, where the gazebo is. Yes. Um, that was... So this Helbrun. was... Helbrun. Helbrun. Yeah. Helbrun Palace. Yeah, I've got it right here in my notes. Um, so it's Helbrun Palace, also known as the Pleasure Palace. This was built... Don't ask me when, but the... A long time ago. A long, long time. 16th, 17th century. Um, that had all these really cool water features designed to entertain his prank. guests, mm-hmm. prank his guests. Um, I was not amused with my three thousand dollar camera. Um, I'm like, you can do. <laughs> I kept saying to the guides because they had this, you know, this Austrian woman doing the tour, and I said, this woman gets my camera wet. I'm going to beat her with it. <laughs> I'm going to beat her with it. Um, but it was really cool. and Oh, yeah. All like the little, it's not, I don't want to say like animatronics, but there's all these like little alcoves. With, with water powered. Handmade. Animatronics. animatronics essentially, yeah. Um, but they're powered by water. And for its day, it was, you know, absolutely, you know, cutting edge technology. 
and uh, this was his day palace. He never slept there. There were no bedrooms there because he only went, would go out for the day and use it to entertain. And I'm like, okay, yeah. wow. Oh, and he had this one big giant table where everyone he could have seated down. And what they didn't know was that on his command, water would just shoot up from the on seats. all of his guests from the seats. Yeah, from the seats. It was wild. So it was kind of like a, a, an enema, <laughs> for <laughs> lack of a better term. So you can, you know, visit Europe and get an anima all at the same time. Um, in the gardens of Helbron Palace is where they have moved the gazebo yeah. where Liesel sings 16 going on 17. The exterior. Um, the exterior. The interior was filmed on a soundstage at Fox, mm-hmm. but the one that you would see in the shots where they were leading into it, this is this is the actual one. Yeah. And so everybody got pictures taken in there. Um, and that's an ABD difference, is that they don't allow normal right. people to go in there. Yeah. Only with ABD can you go in the gazebo. They won't let you jump from bench to bench anymore either. Yeah, well, I mean, probably for Probably good not a good idea. <laughs> well, people broke their ankle. Yeah, yeah well, sure. Um, then they took us to St. Michael's Church, which was the church where um, uh, Julie Andrews and... Uh, Christopher Plummer got married uh, in the in the movie, yeah. and that that's a gorgeous church. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. But this is what cracked me up. Um, first of all, of course, they have a gift shop. You know, it's a gift shop. I bought holy water there. <laughs> right? Was your holy water in a Jägermeister bottle? Yep. <laughs> okay. They have the little Jägermeister, and it still says Jägermeister on the side, in little Jägermeister bottles. Is the holy water? It's, it's recycling at its best. Over. I it's, think that's very, very clever. I thought, well, you know what? It made me want to buy him. You know, the only other reason I would need holy water was Sorry. to spray it on him. So that was very, very cool. And again, they're showing us, um, showing us all these different, all these different places and scenes from. Yeah, well, from and the and that's at Monsi, and it is this. Glad gorgeous, you remember the names of these town. places. Oh, I. This trip meant a lot to me. So, um, it meant a lot to me too. I yeah. just have no memory. It just, this town on a beautiful day, like we ended up, when we first drove through it, they're like, it'll be better when we come back. It was all rainy and disgusting. And then the day we showed up, it was beautiful, sunny skies. It's this giant lake. All the boats are out on mm-hmm. it. And at least where we ate, you had the view of all the mountains yes. right behind the lake. And it's just, and stunning. I will tell you. Uh, it's the name of the town, at least, is Monsee, M O N D S E E. I th- believe that's the name of the lake, too. And this restaurant, um, we had lunch there, and they served this ridiculous amount of food. I mean, it was crazy the amount of food they put out. I have to tell you, some of the best pizza I've ever tasted. Same place, son. Yeah. I was stunned how good this pizza wow. was in Austria. Um, after that, they took us to what is absolutely one of the big highlights of this trip for me. Um, not for the reasons you think. Um, there is a scene in The Sound of Music where they're on the terrace and they're doing the pink lemonade. Uh, well, they took us to, and this is, I don't think you did this. I don't think they were, they, they, they don't do this all the time because it's, I forgot they explained why. But we went to the place where that was filmed, yeah. where the terrace was. Um, we were the first group, I think, that went, or at least oh, okay. one of the, so they, one they of the first groups. Yeah. But okay, they, they did do it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is also the scene, you know, where they fall out of the canoe into the into the lake. So you're right, right there where they filmed it, and it's really, really cool. What I wasn't aware was that that building that at that terrace is attached to is a hotel that's been turned in to a hotel. Uh, Leopoldskron Palace. Um, and oh, there he goes. Um, no, I, I want to say we went to Lake Monsey. Well, I'm going to tell you, let me just tell you about this palace. There is, uh, adjacent to the palace is a building where most of the hotel rooms are, but the palace itself has some suites that you can, you can, you can rent, right? And stay at a hotel absolutely gorgeous palace gorgeous the breakfast room the dining room was like oh my god i need to have breakfast in here at least once in my life um but you know we got back on the bus and i'm like i can't imagine what they're charging a night 
to stay there. And so I looked it up. $500, $600 a night, depending on what time of the year you're going. I'm like, are you kidding me? It was incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then they served us pink lemonade on the terrace. But it was awful. <laughs> yeah, we didn't go in. It was uh, it was still being refurbished. So that's why we were like one of the first groups. But you still got the idea. Like you could tell it was that place in the movie. But we just kind of walked out and stood there, took some pictures, and, and left. And then we, um, uh, our next, the next stop on the trip, obviously, was Vienna. Um, well, you uh, just pointed out you didn't go. I woke you up in the middle of the night when I was in the hospital. Yes, thank you. Uh, that day that you ended up skipping was the day you go to Werfen, which is... Uh, there's two things you can do there. I know the one is the, the ice hole cave. The ice hole cave. Which you have to say that carefully. Um, and that was that was one of the highlights, if not the highlight. A for lot Kylie of people and I. said that. That, mm-hmm. but the going to the ice cave. Let's call it that. Yeah. Um, going to that cave did require a pretty significant hike up a steep hill after a giant gondola ride. And once you get to the top of the gondola, then it was probably a good mile hike up a steep hill, high mm-hmm. up in the mountains to then get in there. And then it's you and climb up and come back down. All, and I was up for doing it, except they said once you get in there, you're not allowed to take pictures. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. They let us take pictures. Then. Well, they didn't yeah. let us take pictures. <laughs> um, so I was like, definitely not doing that. So I was yeah. going to do the cheese farm. That was the that other was the option. Other was to do the cheese form, but yes, uh, at four yeah. o'clock in the morning, I find out this one's in the yeah. house in the emergency room. And then the backside of this one is they then take you to the uh, the Hohenwerfen Castle, and they use it in one of the sh- helicopter shots from Sound of Music. But uh, it's also they made a Clint Eastwood movie back there, like where eagles fly or something in the seventies. It was just recently, a couple of years ago, featured in um, Man in the High Castle, the Amazon Prime show. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a it's a beautiful castle. I mean, you've seen one castle, you've been through most of them, but then they did like a they do the falconry there, and you all sit on this hillside watching the falcons fly over you. It's, it was it was a neat stop. This town is is pretty cool, very beautiful. It, yeah. So yeah, that was yeah. You know, You'll I go miss. back. I'll go back. I'll go back. Um, and then, of course, the final stop on the on the tour is Vienna. Um, and in Vienna, we stay at the Ritz Carlton. Oh nice. my goodness! Yeah. that was an absolutely spectacular hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, it is actually three palaces that have been kind of joined and turned into the Ritz Carlton. So there are some odd stair placement, let's say. Like I was up on the seventh floor, I believe, and I had to walk up a small flight of stairs and around and then down a flight of stairs. And so other people on the seventh floor had to go down another flight mm-hmm. of stairs and because to make these pal- these three places, these three individual buildings work together, that's what yeah, they had to do. It's very, very European. But the rooms were absolutely breathtaking, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, just first first rate across the board, one of the nicest, if not the nicest hotel I've stayed in on an Adventures by Disney trip. Um, this was really first class. Um, and uh, they, uh, the first full day there, uh, they took us on um, a tour. What, what's the name? The Schoenburn. The Schoenburn Palace, Palace tour. Yeah. The Summer Palace. Uh, the, the Summer Palace. The Winter Palace is like two miles away. So, like, Apparently, yeah, back then, that's like 100 miles. Well, it was more because um, in the Summer Palace, oh, the, rooms are much, the rooms are much larger, so it's more airy, whereas in the Winter Palace, the rooms are very small to keep the heat in, so that's why they yeah. call it the Summer and Winter Palace. Yeah. But um, a lot of people on the trip enjoyed it. I did not at all. I, I You know what? I really... And because I've done... A lot of these tours, mm. I am not the least bit interested in hearing the blow by blow of this person. And, you know, when they took a crap in this room and then they shot somebody in this room and like, okay, whatever. You know, yeah. I just wasn't, 
it, it, there was nothing particularly. The only thing that interested me was there was one room where they had a state dinner for John F. Kennedy when he visited Austria. I'm like, okay, well, that's a little more interesting to me. It was my first palace, so I enjoyed it because I had never been in. It's my first palace. Well, it, it was. It was my first time. Uh, since then, like I still haven't done anything like Versailles. Go one big, day. princess. Um, I, I've done the dream Biltmore. Big. Oh, dream big, princess. I've I've done the Biltmore in North Carolina, and that's like the Americanized version of one of these. So it's it's cool for the first one, but I have a feeling that if you've seen one palace. You've kind of seen most of them, and if you've seen something like this Versailles, was like, you've seen the best. Well, this was kind of like a toned-down version of Versailles, but um, her daughter, Marie, was it Marie Theresa, was the yeah was the the, the monarch yeah. Um, her daughter actually uh, married Louis of France, yes. and so a lot of Versailles is inspired yeah. by what she grew up in in the Summer Palace. Um, the gardens so, were beautiful. I did Buckingham too. Palace. That was enough. It was just, it was not for me. But what they did, one of the things they did there, which was really cool, was the strudel making. Yes. Did you do the strudel oh, making yeah. demonstration? I stole my recipe card from it. Um, first of all, His this was the first group to do it. This, <laughs> this was strudel. This was amazing strudel. And they actually give you a live demonstration, this cute little, little cafe. That they have set up just to do this with all the ingredients and everything you'd need, you can buy right there to make this strudel. Um, and it was, it was spectacular. Yeah. It was really, that was much, much more enjoyable for me oh, than yeah. the yeah, palace store. Um, and I, uh, now unfortunately, um, because I made some mistakes when booking my flights, um, I had to leave. This was my last full day of this tour I left I had to leave the next morning which was the full last day of the the tour but um, we ended our night at the Vienna Zoo now again on paper this is what I hear from everybody who takes this trip how unbelievable this okay. is okay on paper I'm like okay it's we're gonna have dinner in a zoo okay and I don't know I, I still am shocked by my response to it but First of all, they take us in after hours, and they uh, give us a tour mm -hmm. of the zoo. And at this point, just the tour of the zoo, I was enthralled. Yeah. Absolutely enthralled. Um, I felt like a kid. The way I was reacting to seeing these animals, I felt like I was five years old. Then it dawned on me, I haven't stepped foot in a zoo in, since I was a kid. I mean, animals, Animal Kingdom notwithstanding, I haven't stepped foot in a zoo in many, many, many years. And I was blown away. A, how beautiful it is. B, how well kept it is. Um, but there was just something about the whole experience. And then the location where we have dinner is the, uh, uh, it, it's, like, it's like a dining hall in the center of the yeah. zoo. The big glass kind of gazebo ish. It was, type. It's kind of like a big gazebo. <clears throat> but this was actually built for Maria Teresa mm -hmm. when she was the ruler. And this was her menagerie. And she would sometimes like to have breakfast there. So this is what was built for her to have breakfast. So it's a stunning, stunning room in this stunning. Yeah. It was, zoo. It was natural. In every way, shape, and form for a zoo. And usually <clears throat> that's not the case. You think of a zoo as almost captivity for the animals. But this felt like a very warm environment. It, it was breathtaking. It did. It had a, a wonderful energy to it. I, I, I can't believe I'm going on and on about a zoo. but We hear this a lot. It, when people come back from this trip, this is a highlight. This a, a trip that's full of highlights. Exactly. Are. It's like very hard for me to pick one thing. But if I had to pick one... This would be very, very near the top of the list. Yep. Um, and the day that and and that the, the dinner that night was okay. Um, wasn't particularly fantastic, but then again, I was. They, they had served me. I had ordered at the beginning of the trip. I'd ordered, you know, something that was going to be somewhat keto friendly. Um, I was like, oh, big mistake. <laughs> Because again, like, like leather. I know John and Kevin said the same thing. We all love German food, 
but you do reach a point with some German food where you've had schnitzel or sausage for like the tenth time in a row, and it does start to get it's a little. Happened to Kevin on our Germany trip. When we did our Germany trip, I love German food. Yeah. On the last night, they had fish, and I thought I've got to have something Kevin besides fish. schnitzel and yeah. sausage and <laughs> worsts. And what I love about, first of all, hearing about this trip is it's very adventures by Disney from a lot of the experiences. There's a lot of exclusive stuff mm -hmm. that not everybody gets to do. There's a lot of cultural things. There are places you never thought you'd want to see. Who wants to see a salt mine? Or an ice cave? Uh, and even the, the final day, I know since Pete didn't go, I know two of the things that we did are, are still at least there. You start um, with going to the Spanish riding school, mm -hmm. which is where they have the Lepizaners, I believe is the correct the name. The Lepizaners, yeah. Yeah, and these are the, the dancing horses that they could be gone to this day, but uh, during World War II, there was a, a whole American general who knew all about them and saved them. They made a Walt Disney um, a Walt Disney movie about it, a live action one. Which we watched. 60, yeah. We watched on the way. Uh, and... Yeah, on the way going to Vienna. You don't normally see a performance of these. A lot of times no. you see a practice. Exactly. But we didn't even see a practice, but they let us in the stables so we could get up closer to them. And I just don't want to give people the impression that... But there were that people on our trip that were able to get tickets, tickets. for a performance because right. there was a performance going on. So they actually... A number of people missed the farewell dinner that night because they had tickets to go. Another thing that's very popular when people are in Vienna is if you can get tickets to either a practice or a performance of the boys' choir. Yeah. Yes, the Vienna Boys Choir, sure. Um, we also, that day, we you go to a uh, dance lesson to learn the Viennese waltz. And, you know, all the ladies loved that. And Craig. Talk about dancing horses. I was um, not as much a fan. Just saying. Did you waltz, Craig? I, I tried my best. I did. They were the first group to do that. That video would have been... <laughs> we were the last one to do it. <laughs> no. That video would have been priceless. Um, so, yeah, that was, for me, the end of the trip uh, at the zoo. Of course, like I said, there was an additional day, as Craig just outlined. Um, but overall, um, I, I walked away from it with an experience that I, I just never expected to have. Um, it was, I, I really, you know, I go into these, especially when I know I'm going to do this, I go into these looking for what's wrong like what's not a, so other than you know the food wasn't terrible but it wasn't particularly great either so i guess that's one thing i can say um i think they should consider expanding the progressive food tour in prague um uh outside of that i don't have i don't i don't got much for you you didn't do the germany trip no you should do that one. That's one. Now that you've had this one, you should do the Germany trip. Well, it's it's definitely trip. opened my eyes to just because on paper it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it won't be. Now I that love the Germany trip. Yeah, me too. All that being said, um, you know, if you follow us, uh, you know that next October fourth, we're doing a London, Paris, Disneyland, Paris exclusive uh, Dreams Unlimited Diz trip. Um, well, it turns out that, because um, I, I actually want to go back and do this trip again. I actually want to go back and do this trip again. And, it, and I noticed that Disney has a departure date for September 24th through October 2nd um, for next year. But it's waitlisted. That's because they're not sure they're going to run it. So I wanted to put out there, and I'll do this on next Tuesday's show as well. I wanted to put out there to folks, if you might be interested in doing this trip with me and maybe some of us, um, send an email, Kevin at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Let them know. Um, not making a commitment, just saying that you would be interested. I kind of went over the price point. It's about $5,900 a person for adults. Uh, this would be an adult exclusive trip. This is not for kids. Um, and so you'd be looking at roughly $12,000, not including your airfare, to do this trip. If it's something you might be interested in, send Kevin at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com an email. Let him know. And then we'll see. We'll see if we can actually make a trip happen. If, I would love to do it again, though. If we have enough interest in that, we will contact Disney and start uh, booking it. Just want to let you know, 
Pete mentioned the price. We don't have any idea what the price would actually be because they're not. That's a yeah. That's a guy, that's a guidepost. Yeah. Guidepost of the pricing, but so if you're interested, Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel, and he will. Uh, put you on a wait list, and then we'll see how many people we have, and then move forward with that. It wouldn't be an exclusive group. No. It wouldn't be just Dreams doing it. We'd be, be mixed with other people, but right. um, yeah, because we're not going to contract this out. I don't right. think I can put 30 people on this trip. Right. But I I really want to do it again. It would be perfect for me to do it those dates because it backs up perfectly to my next ABD on uh, London Paris. Already in Europe? What the heck? Right? You should. You guys should come and do it. I want you to go to the salt mines. Yeah. So, yeah. Really. Pete, I work in the salt mines. Um, Look sorry. over there. <laughs> we have a lot of travel next year. A lot. You're already in Europe. Yeah, I know I'm already in Europe. We have a lot of travel. You're already in Europe. But we'll see. Maybe we'll do it. We'll see. I'm not going into the salt mines. You'll go. Slide away. Well, that's the then they had part. a lovely little cafe. Right. There's a whole street of shopping with lovely little cafes. No, I'm saying at the at the at the salt mines. Yeah, I'm not they going had... out there either. <laughs> One of the things we have you're not learned. even getting on the bus, yeah. but then you're gonna miss. Then you're gonna miss all the sound of music stuff because they don't go back to the hotel. That's first stop in the morning, and then you do the sound of music stuff. <laughs> so you can hang out in the cafe while everybody else is sliding down salt mines, and into then into the pits of the earth. Into the pits of the earth. So here's what we've learned on our trips: is there's always an alternative. That's you right. talk to the guide. How strenuous is this? What's going to happen? Give us an outline. And how we, much does it cost to Uber to the Sound of Music? Right. <laughs> and then we work out how we're going to make it happen ourselves. Okay. And it, it always works out good for us. So There's something else to be said. I just want to interject this. If, and I'm, I've been joking about this, if, not, if going to the salt mines makes you think, I'm not doing that, which it does to me, you are not required to participate in any right, activity. Right, exactly. If there were you, people who didn't do the salt mines. If you don't want to do it, there's usually an alternative. If we're going, we'll make an alternative. <laughs> we'll do something. We'll play cards in the cafe. Um, but you don't have to do things. Don't ever let that be a reason not to go. There's other things to do. Like I know in a lot of trips there's bike riding. And if you want fun video, yeah, no. you should watch me bike ride. Um, so there are options. There is always options. Right. You're never forced to do anything. Excellent. Um, thank you, Pete, very much for that recap of your trip. If you're interested in this or any Adventures by Disney trip and you already have a Dreams Unlimited Travel agent, contact your agent. Or if you don't have an agent, contact Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel. We do give a discount for every Adventures by Disney trip, and it's a money off based on the cost of the adventure. So you're saving money with us. When Plug you the London us. Paris trip one more time. And I'm going to let you do that. We're going October 4th through the 13th, a couple nights in London, a couple nights in Paris, and we're ending up in Disneyland Paris. Our trip is different because our guides are going to be with us from the beginning of the trip to the end of the trip. So your Disneyland Paris trip is going to be an Adventures by Disney Disneyland Paris, where if you book this on your own and book an addition to Disneyland Paris, once the Paris trip ends, you're on your own. You do Disneyland Paris on your own. Ours is different. We'll have a... Uh, tour guides we will have an imagineer we'll have a vip guided tour fast passes things like that it starts october 4th it ends october 13th you could bump this up against the central europe trip it's i didn't bring the numbers with me because i didn't think i was gonna have to use it it's like 10 3 per person based on double occupancy and 14 5 if you're a single traveler there are no children on this trip currently but ours is not an adult exclusive so if you wanted to bring children they're less but there are no other children booked already excellent excellent all right thank you pete thank you everybody for participating thank you everybody at home for listening and watching we hope you have a great week and we hope you have a great vacation